The next market type that we can put under imperfect competition, moving from lowest barriers to entry, lowest degree of price control, to highest degree of price control with absolute barriers to entry, we go monopolistic to oligopoly. Oligopoly is one of those really fun words that doesn't mean a whole lot to people unless they're actually taking economics. And again, you're going to see some tendencies toward monopoly here, but then you got some other things going on too. So looking at the characteristics of the market, Some markets there are a lot, some there aren't very many. Um, is the product the same or is it different? The answer is yes. Because if you're talking about barrels of crude oil, they're the same. And if you're talking about breakfast cereal, then they're different. But both of those markets are oligopolies. So there's, there's a lot of variation here. But just like monopolistic competition, you want to look at the idea of product differentiation and having some price control. The defining characteristic of an oligopoly is that your largest firms are the ones that are basically controlling the market. So you got, you don't want to think of many firms, but the biggest deal here is that you have a few firms with a very high degree of control. is in terms of what's called a concentration ratio. If you want to think about it that way, that may or may not be in whatever book you're using. So that's one way you can figure out what exactly the market type is you're dealing with. Now, does that mean that you know if it's 38%, it's not an oligopoly? It's just a benchmark. Okay, you don't want to take this as an absolute, but that's one way that you can you know if you want kind of a rule of thumb to make a determination that would do it. Let's see, markets that are oligopolies. I already said crude oil. I already said breakfast cereal. Automobiles is one. Um, beer in the United States, oligopoly brewing, there's some debate on that. It's changing. Um, it has been changing in, say, the past, I would say, maybe 10, 15 years with microbreweries, and yet you still have the biggest beer makers controlling most of the sales. So I think you could still make that argument. I haven't seen any numbers on it, but I think you could pull that together. Um, baby food is another one. Um, and there were some allegations of price fixing in baby food markets in the last maybe 15 years. Um, difficult to prove price collusion, but that's another thing that can happen with an oligopoly. We'll get to that. Paper. But remember, um, with an oligopoly, the biggest difference is right here. It doesn't matter if the product is the same or different. Okay. If it's a differentiated oligopoly, the product is different. If it's a homogeneous oligopoly, the product is homogeneous. It doesn't matter. What you're looking for is a few firms that dominate, and other firms can either get on board with their pricing decisions or not. And we're going to look at what that does to their demand curves in just a minute. 